Punawala, I want to begin by asking you the question that the opposition is raising. That the new parliament building was made at a cost of 1,000 crores, 971 to be precise. Look what is happening. Thank you, Pranesh, for having me on your show. And first of all, let me tell you that the Lok Sabha Sachivale has already clarified that there was an eco-friendly parliament that has been made. It has a glass ceiling there. And therefore, some of the adhesive shifted because of which the roof leaked. That is a problem that happens one off when there's so much rain. But when there is a systemic leakage, and that systemic leakage is taking place where? In Kerala, where 300 people have lost their lives. Systematically, the people were allowed to die because from 18th of July, the warnings were going, but the warnings were ignored. 16 hours before D-Day, the warning was ignored. Nine NDRF teams were sent on the ground, the warnings were ignored. The fact is that 200 plus illegal resorts were built. The local MP and the local government ignored the warnings and allowed this to happen. Not a single word of outrage from Mahua Mitra, from Manikam Tagore, from Akhilesh Yadav. Then, in Delhi, 10 people have lost their lives over the last three weeks. Today, a mother and a child have been lost. We have seen how on 27th of July, three aspirants of UPSC lost their lives. Nilesh Rai lost his life in Patel Nagar. People have lost their life because of electrocution, because of drowning. Not a single word of outrage from this outrage factory. In Karnataka, 1,200 farmers have been killed in the last 10 months. Not a single word of outrage. 68 Dalits lost their lives in Tamil Nadu because of the huge tragedy. Not a single word of outrage. I concede, Pranesh, I don't want to battle, I don't want to fight on a leak in parliament. Every time a new structure is created, there are some unforeseen things that take place. This was one of them. But is that leak which did not cost any life of any person? And by the way, the new parliament was built because Meera Kumar had recommended it. But having said that, is that comparable with 300 lives that have been lost? I asked Mr. Kamru Zaman Chaudhary. I asked Mr. Muni. I asked Mr. Raj Gopalan. I asked Mr. Tariq. I think he's there from Samajwadi Party. Show me five tweets on the 300 deaths of Kerala. Show me five tweets that are there on the deaths in Delhi. Show me five tweets of Akhilesh Yadav or Mahua Moitra on the, the uh, kind no, of... So you are saying that this is, this is a deflection tactic by the opposition. And lastly, and lastly, 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 Pranesh, lastly, just zoom into this picture very carefully, cameraman. This is Moeed Khan. Moeed Khan raped an OBC girl in Ayodhya. He is a Samajwadi party office bearer. He is no, a no, close no, aide of the, the Fezabad two are not related. The two Should are not related. We are doing this story also, Shaza. The two are not related. Kamru Zaman Chaudhary, the new parliament building is once again under question. Jairam Ramesh, the who's who of the Congress party, are going after the Modi government. The government has said, and the parliament secretariat has said, that this was an adhesive problem that was sorted. Achilles Yadav is suggesting let's go back to the old parliament. Are you doing this to deflect from real issues? Death and devastation in Delhi, in Kerala? Yeah, good evening, Pranesh. Over the last two minutes, Shahzad had mentioned the word systemic at least three to four times. But he fails to mention this that systematically how corruption was institutionalized by BJP government. Let me take the example, a small example, leave aside the Morbi bridge disaster or the Bihar bridge collapse and everything or the Ram Mandir leakage issue or whatever it is. But let me come to this issue that has been boiling since morning uh, in the parliament house tonight, today. You know, how much did the Tata projects or the Tata control progressive electoral trust donated to the Bharatiya Janta party? A whopping 356 crores in the run-up to the 2019 Lok Sabha election. Immediately, Narendra Modi coming to power and Tata Projects Limited is awarded the 863 crores parliament building construction. Now you see if the cost sheet of a project includes this 363 crores, then obviously there will be deficiency in service, there will be deficiency in the materials being used, but I fail to understand, Shahzad will systematically take his politics to a human or to a, to a tragedy, a natural tragedy of the lives of the, of the Kerala uh, that we are seeing tonight and today. Even his own party's MP like Tejasvi Syria, 
did not lag behind in bringing and making this into a Hindu-Muslim politics or all their stated appeasement politics about it. This is not the level of governance that you are doing. You are in power for the last 10 years. Okay. Why are there systematic This is a case of corruption. Everything. This is not an ordinary that adhesive issue. This is a case of corruption. Upon. Quick response from the BJP. I am coming to you, Tariq Bhai. It's a natural tragedy that the 2022 guidelines for the eco-sensitive zones were rejected by the Kerala government, that it rejected the 2010-2011 reports which said that no illegal construction should take place, that it ignored 18 July 23rd, 24, 25th, 26, 27, 29 and 30th July warnings. 16 hours before the D-Day, there was a warning given, it was rejected and that warning was not taken on board. That was a natural tragedy. It was a natural tragedy that the basement which was meant for storage was being used by library and the fire services of Delhi government did nothing. It was natural tragedy that the MCD kept sleeping when the desilting work was not done in the entire area of Rajinder Nagar. That today the desilting was not done, today the drains were not covered. So a mother and a child fell in that because of the water logging and they got, uh, they died. It was natural tragedy that a UPSC aspirant who was just going around doing his work came in contact with live wire in a waterlogged pool and he died. It was natural tragedy. 300 deaths, 10 deaths in Delhi are natural tragedies and uh, Pranesh, whatever comments he has made about Tata Group, that is for Tata Group to answer through a defamation suit. But I am saying, Aap ek kaam kije, kal aapke paas jo proof hai, Supreme Court le jaiye. But Supreme Court today has spoken about Bibhav Kumar whom you defended. High Court today has spoken about the MCD's role in this entire man-made disaster in Delhi. But you ignore that. And today I want to know that why Chief Minister ignored the warnings that were given time and again. He could have saved the lives of 300 people, but he ignored them for his lust of power and lust of money. Now, we'll come to the disaster, death, devastation bit in just a bit. But I want to... You set, try and at least settle the debate on the new parliament building. Mr. Rajat Gopalan, as a veteran journalist, sir, I don't know the number of rounds or the visits you've uh, you know done to the old parliament building. There have been several newspaper reports, sir. I have the full list here. Now, if I start reading it, the show will not be enough. But I just want to read a couple of things. Jairam Ramesh in 2012 said, we badly need a new parliament building. This one simply isn't functional and is outdated. And then, in September last year, Jairam Ramesh, the same person who was asking for a new parliament building, he said that this is a Modi multiplex, a Modi Marriott. The old parliament building not only had a certain aura, but it facilitated conversations. It was easy to walk between houses, the central hall and the corridors. If architecture can kill democracy, PM has already succeeded even without rewriting the constitution. Is this not hypocrisy? You ask for a new building and then you say this? Uh, Pranesh, in this panel, I am the only one person, journalist, who has covered parliament for 40 years. I have seen eight speakers, eight prime ministers like that. And I covered the parliament like anything. You know, every day I have been visiting there, reporting, etc. Now, Balram Jakar was the speaker of Lok Sabha. Somnath Chatterjee, speaker of Lok Sabha. Meera Kumar, the speaker of Lok Sabha. Bala Yogi, Speaker of Lok Sabha, and successive secretaries to Lok, secretaries general of uh, Lok Sabha have written to government for a new parliament house. And during the tenure of P.V. Nasrallah as Prime Minister, I was present in the house from the old parliament. There was a brick. It may be debris or a brick. It fell on the Prime Minister's seat. And Mira Kumar said, this is atrocious. That is why they put net along the dome of the uh, you know, parliament. And doors used to be very splashy. July and August, this monsoon session of parliament, always been very you know tricky. Inside the parliament, the water will come. Inside the parliament, Najma Abdullah said in Rajya Sabha that we are getting water into the well of the house because there is a drainage under the Rajya Sabha. It is a 100-year-old building. No one kept their secrets, you know, the sewerage properly. So therefore, there were technical issues. Today, what that uh, dripping of the water was a very, uh, it's not an, um, uh, it's an abnormal, abnormal situation. Second, the door opened on the top of the dome. That is what. Second thing, now I want to ask only one thing. Today, I heard a church near the Karol Bagh was also drenched, full of water. In, uh, in the Nizamuddin Darga, full of water. Right. Ten Janpat, full of water. 
24 akbar full of water is there any leakage will government say anything on that or will the 10 janpath don't occupied right. by madam i, I get that point